pence across the board. Great chili, junior bacon cheeseburgers, baby fries, Caesar side salad. It was a great lunch. I'd forgotten money can go that far. Wendy's 9 for 99 super value menu where you don't pay more. You just get more. $74 for sneakers? That's cheap. Man, I must be getting old. As you know, I'm not only the heck of a president, I'm also a client. If your hair is thinning like mine was, call now for your free video. The first thing my wife said when she saw it is that I looked 10 years younger. That was the first words out of her mouth. Not hello, not hi. I feel good about myself when I get up in the morning. It's easier to maintain and manage. So call now for your free video on hair comes developments in dealing with thinning hair. To help our clients, see how this free video can help you too. And now, here are tonight's winning Powerball numbers. This is KSTP Channel 5, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Live from your 24-hour news channel, this is Eyewitness to the Week. Good evening, thank you for joining us. Our top story tonight, a 14-year-old is arrested for the murder of a group home worker. And a 29-year-old woman is taken into custody for allegedly helping him elude police. Now, it all began in Lionel Lake Thursday night when authorities believe a 14-year-old boy went on a shooting spree. It was a long lake drive around 8 o'clock Thursday night that officials say the 14-year-old suspect got into an argument with a man driving a pickup truck. The suspect allegedly fired two shots at him, but it appears the shooting didn't end there. That same night, this home, only a half a mile away, was riddled with bullets. But it was at a home for mentally disabled adults just down the block that the shooting turned deadly. 23-year-old Don Halderson was sitting on a couch watching TV when a bullet went through the window, struck, and killed her. Because the suspect is a juvenile, officials would only comment from a prepared statement. At approximately 11 p.m. that night, investigators arrested a 14-year-old juvenile male suspect for the murder of Don Halderson. Sources tell Eyewitness News that this is not the first time the 14-year-old has been in trouble with the law, but he is not the only one in trouble tonight. 29-year-old Sandra Frederick, who rented this house across the street from the house that had been shot up, was also arrested. For aiding an offender to avoid arrest, as she acted as an accomplice after the fact. Tonight, authorities will not say how the 14-year-old boy and the 29-year-old woman are connected. Now, earlier today, I talked to the victim's family. They didn't want to go on camera, but told me Dawn always wanted to help people. That's why she was working at the group home and why she'd been taking classes in sociology and psychology. Charges against the suspect and his alleged accomplice are expected on Monday. Two men accused of firing their guns at a pair of Minneapolis police officers early this morning are in custody tonight. The incident happened near the intersection of 33rd Street and Chicago Avenue while the officers were on a robbery call. Reporter Ross Kurgis has the details. It appeared to be a routine burglary call shortly after midnight for two Minneapolis policemen. They were talking to two men in a van when the shots rang out in front of David Stensrud's house. It just happened so fast. Like I heard the shots in there. Next thing I know, cops are all over. The officers were not hit, and the men they were talking to also escaped injury. The shots were fired out of a passing car carrying at least two passengers, and this woman, who did not want to be identified, saw it speed away. I heard a bunch of gunshots when I was watching TV, so I came out on my porch and I looked outside, and there was a little red car just going down, down that street, you know, smoking. One of the officers had enough time to draw his gun and fire a couple of shots at the suspect's vehicle. He shattered a window, and that helped police make an arrest. A vehicle with a shattered window was recovered a few blocks away where police arrested two suspects. 22-year-old Danielle Rosenblum and a 16-year-old male now face charges of second-degree assault. The shooting took place right across from an elementary school where neighbors say there are also crack houses. It's a shooting that so far has no clear motive. Ross Kirchis, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Now the uh, names of the officers involved are being withheld until the investigation is complete. A 22-year-old man is dead tonight after an early morning shooting in Minneapolis. It happened around 2.15 a.m. in front of 1507 Thomas Avenue North. Police say Rodney Tommy Henry and two others were arguing when Henry was shot to death. The suspects drove off but were later arrested. The two suspects are expected to be charged with murder. Well, the search is on tonight for a Duluth couple. Police say kidnapped a Minneapolis prostitute. The woman says the trucker and his wife repeatedly beat her 
and forced her to do what she says were degrading acts. The woman told police she was made to perform sex acts on both captors and drink urine. Later, the woman says the couple took her on the road with them, but she was able to escape in Sioux City, Iowa. The male suspect served 26 years in a New York prison for first-degree murder. Tonight in St. Paul, supporters of the Chamber Orchestra are wondering about its future. The orchestra's concert went on as scheduled with a Grammy-winning soprano at the Ordway tonight, but underlying it all was a serious labor problem and the threat of bankruptcy. The musicians have been asked to take an 18% cut in pay and to fill in for musicians with the Minnesota Opera, who are also involved in a labor dispute. Orchestra musicians passed out flyers last night asking the audience for support. Negotiations with management are continuing. Well, a few Twin Cities soldiers had tears in their eyes this afternoon at Fort Snelling as they saw their unit come to an end. The military is in the process of making cutbacks, and this Army Reserve unit, the 882nd Personal Service Company, is one that's being eliminated. About 120 members said their goodbyes at a ceremony this afternoon. When you're in the military, just like any other uh, job in the civilian world, you become very close and attached, and it's a very emotional day for us. We're sad to see it come, but well, that's the way it is. But the commander says every one of the active members was able to find a new job somewhere else in the military, in the National Guard and Reserves. A look at the world tonight begins in the Middle East, where the prospect of peace is causing both celebration and bloodshed. Palestinians in East Jerusalem marched in celebration after hearing that Yasser Arafat will sign a peace accord Monday in Washington, along with Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir. But just a few miles north, two Muslim protesters were killed and eight others injured during a clash with Israeli soldiers. President Clinton axed 125,000 federal jobs today as part of his plan to streamline the government. During a trip to Houston, Mr. Clinton signed an executive order requiring all federal managers to supervise at least 15 people. Currently, some supervisors oversee as few as four. No timetable has been set for the changes. A Nevada casino was back in business tonight following a 20-hour bomb scare. Yesterday morning, somebody called the Nugget Casino just outside Reno and warned of a hidden bomb. Gamblers were evacuated, and search teams found a metal box hidden behind a temporary wall. The bomb squad took the box into the desert, but it was found to contain no explosives. Well, we've told you this story five times since mid-July. The space shuttle Discovery is set for launch. NASA will try it a sixth time early tomorrow morning, and all systems are go at this hour. Last month, engine problems forced the launch to be scrubbed three seconds before liftoff. The mission includes a spacewalk and the deployment of a weather satellite. Three. Engine ignition. We have liftoff. Now you're looking at what could be the future of space travel, the Delta Clipper. The Clipper took its second public flight today in New Mexico. It flew up 300 feet, uh, flew sideways for a while, then made a perfect vertical landing. A full-scale model is already on the drawing board. And talk about savings. It cost $400 million for each space shuttle flight. Delta Clipper trips could only cost $10 million. Well, still ahead, honors from Minnesota's favorite son. We'll review the top stories of the week, including a special award for Ambassador Walter Mondale. And a little later in sports, the Gophers try to rack up a win against some small-time competition. It's almost going to feel like summer when we come into Sunday's forecast, but the AccuWeather 5 forecast is flavored with a little fall. That's coming up. New Double Power Whisk versus Tide Ultra. Whisk is concentrated really thick. Tide is thin by comparison. They both wash the same amount of laundry. So how come there's so much more Tide? Because you need more Tide to wash as much as Whisk. See, Whisk is more powerful. It's thicker. And the fact is, new Whisk even cleans better. Introducing concentrated double power Whisk. It's smaller, thicker, it cleans better than Tide. <laughs> Have you noticed your house showing any signs of age? Then follow the best signs of fall to the Parade of Homes Fall Showcase. You'll see the finest in new home construction from the area's best builders. Over 500 homes in every size and style, every price range, and in every part of town. Open the door to the new home of your dreams. Pick up your free Parade of Homes guide at all Metro Super America stores. In the next 60 minutes, more people will buy Ford F-Series pickups than any other. That's why the Ford F-150 is the best-selling vehicle in the world. And why five of the top ten best-sellers in America are Ford. F-150 is better than ever, with a sleek, redesigned look and comfortable, well-equipped interior. Even a roomy supercab. 
And during the factory authorized clearance, every F-150 is priced to move. How will you spend the next 60 minutes? If you're like many, you'll spend them at the Ford factory authorized clearance at your local Northland Ford dealer. Escape for men. Calvin Klein exclusively with Dayton. September 13th. Accused of keeping transplant money. Watch a current affair extra. Pomp and circumstance of a presidential visit tops our look at the week in review. Jimmy Carter came to St. Paul yesterday to help honor Walter Mondale. Of them, and I am grateful that my partner, my vice president, almost my brother, will take on this position for you and for me and for the rest of the world. The former president presented Mondale with a Meritorious Service Award from McAllister College. Mondale was a student there in 1948, and he met future wife Joan there. Next week, the Mondales head for Japan, where he'll begin his career as U.S. Ambassador. Yeah, and here's a look at some of the other stories that made headlines this past week. The party ended on Monday as the 1993 Minnesota State Fair closed with near record attendance. 1.6 million people enjoyed the food, rides, and the entertainment. On Tuesday, Bloomington doctor John Hines was convicted of fondling three women patients and must forfeit his medical license for six years. Hines gave female patients unnecessary breast exams when they came in with sore throats and other unrelated problems. The doctor still faces dozens of civil lawsuits. The last of the St. Paul explosion victims went home on Wednesday. If you always believe in God, um, you would always make it through. And if you have people around you to support you. I guess that's all you need. The grocery store owner risked his own life to warn residents of the natural gas leak that destroyed homes and businesses along 3rd and Mariah. On Thursday, the truth finally came out concerning the tragic drowning of a West St. Paul boy. Friends of Ray Schumann first said he fell in a sewer while chasing a tennis ball. The boys now admit they took off the sewer cover and were playing in the sewer when rainwater swept Ray away. Kenneth Molly resigned as mayor of Woodbury on Friday, right after admitting he propositioned a teenage boy in May. In a plea bargain with prosecutors, Molly will serve a 60-day jail term and receive counseling. Molly was scheduled to go on trial Monday. Formal sentencing is now set for October 28th. Meantime, the Woodbury City Council will appoint an acting mayor sometime during the next few weeks. Well, meteorologist Chris Grode is up next to tell us if our Sunday plans should be indoors or outdoors. Well, today they weren't uh, singing in the rain, they were swinging in the rain. Stay with us. Spend one unforgettable day with Tony Robbins, live at the Minneapolis Convention Center, September 15th. This is a personal invitation to join us and commit yourself to a higher level of personal excellence. And I want to remind you that it's in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. I challenge you right now to make some decisions that can immediately increase the quality of your life. This event will sell out quickly. Call now to register. Area code 612-947-9274. Thanks for taking a swing at Channel 5's Beat the Pro Golf Tournament. Your efforts together with top athletes and Beat the Pro sponsors helped raise nearly $19,000 for the boys and girls clubs of Minneapolis and St. Paul. And we couldn't have done it without you. Hi, I'm Joe Schmidt. Next year we are going to be back on 10 great golf courses for another year of Beat the Pro for a great cause. Yeah! We're Channel 5 and we're on your side. Once again, your Vikingland GMC truck dealers have had a very successful year, and they're very thankful. So right now, when you buy a 1993 GMC Jimmy, you'll get a tough, rugged truck that comes with all this. And you'll also get these thank you notes, a $1,500 rebate, and to qualified buyers, an additional $500. It's an offer that definitely looks good on paper. See your Vikingland GMC truck dealers today. Choosing the right heating and cooling dealer used to be a real guessing game. Furnace man! But now, with Lennox Quality Dealer Standards, Lennox Products and Dealers are an unbeatable team. Get the team of professionals you can trust. Call Twin City Furnace in the St. Paul area for all your heating and cooling needs. For dependable service and quality installations, call O'Connor Plumbing and Heating. See my friends at O'Connor Plumbing and Heating today. 
Buy a qualifying Lennox system now and get a free color TV. If you think you see taxpayer money going to waste, Channel 5's investigative unit wants to know. Call 1-800-50-WASTE. Well, Mike and I were talking about it earlier today. The weather kind of ran the gamut from cloudy to sunny to very windy, as we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. Saw it all. And you were up there with the wind uh, nearly blowing you down at 6 o'clock. <laughs> it's like a hairspray we're commercial. Still going on the thing. I'm sorry, but it was sunny, <laughs> Chris. I had friends calling me after the show uh, going, nice look tonight. Hey. Kind of like a rooster. It was right <laughs> straight up in the back. It was great. That's one of the reasons I usually like to keep it short, but I'm going into the, the winter type longer mm -hmm. hair. Got to keep, keep your neck warm. Someplace Little Forks mm -hmm. in Minnesota, the Arrowhead, has uh, had a couple of straight nights of frost now. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some, I might mention a mm -hmm. snow in the Black Hills of South Dakota by Monday morning. Some cold air could be blowing in there. Now remember, hey, that's only, what, eight 900 miles away, but you got elevation happening for you. As you go up in the mountains, you start to see some snow this time of year. Not a whole lot. I think you're going to enjoy Sunday. We'll back it up to this morning. Failing golf course. The umbrellas were out. A little sprinkle going on, about six one hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport. A couple of hours of rain, things brightened up. It was a gorgeous afternoon. Yeah, okay. Temperatures around the state right now cooling off just a touch. International Falls is at 53, 51 in Duluth. 50s over there, Wisconsin, here. These are pretty close to the high temperatures today. A lot of clouds, the rainfall that we saw early in the morning still sticking around. Here's South Dakota just off the map about that far, hit 94 this afternoon. Big temperature contrast around, that means things are happening. Right now in Minneapolis and St. Paul, clear skies, 63 degrees, 56 is the dew point. Dew point, temperature at which dew forms, so if we drop down to that 56, you can get a wet lawn. The winds kind of blowing today, weren't they? Southeast, uh, 9 miles an hour now, we'll have winds again tomorrow. And then by Monday, a raw northwesterly wind. Okay, into the almanac data. For today, 73 and 45, 6 one hundredths of an inch of rain at the airports. 96 and 35 are the record sunsets. 731. Quick look at satellite pictures here. We'll pick up a little warm air trying to blow in. Kicked up the thunder. There they go. And now the low gray clouds over Wisconsin. Kind of a crummy day there. The arrowhead should be frost-free overnight tonight. Doesn't look like anything's getting organized out there, but there will be a cold front. Warm air here, southerly winds, and then cold northerly winds behind it. Wherever you get that clash of air mass, that's when you have a risk of a storm or two. I'm thinking about a one in three type of thing, one in three chance of storms tomorrow. And then that cooler air is going to really push in on Monday. So highs tomorrow, still pretty summery when you head back to work. That's when the crummy weather shows up. Finally, we're getting into the, the right timing here. Okay, the AccuWeather 5 forecast overnight tonight, 57 basically clear skies when you wake up tomorrow morning about 60 degrees and sunday looks pretty good i might even be a little conservative here i can envision 82 or 83 in the afternoon maybe a one in three chance at an evening thunderstorm scattered showers tomorrow night as some of that rain that cold air comes in and on monday this might be optimistic uh, temperatures could hold in the mid 60s if we're lucky then looking ahead a little bit well you get you get a big mass of cold air and just like it's wont to do in january it clears things out for a couple of days around this time of year, temperatures that are cool are mm -hmm. temperatures in the 60s. So fall-like. Tomorrow's going to be cool. nice. Yeah, yeah, real nice. Thanks, Chris. Up next in sports, in case you didn't get your fill of college football today on ABC. Yeah, Eric Isselson has the day on the gridiron, including the Gophers' home opener against Indiana State. That's next, so stay with us. Imagine if everyone had a place to call home. If there was neighbor, no more hunger, if every child had no every child had someone to look up, had someone to look up to. Imagine if everyone could find work. Imagine if you had someone to Imagine if kids had a place to play. Imagine if kids had a place to play. There was no more fear. There was no more fear. Imagine, Imagine if everyone knew how everyone to knew how to read. Imagine what we can do together. This year, please give generously to United Way. For the Kellys, it was sending their children to college. For Tom Gray, it was being his own boss. Everyone has a dream, but these people also have a bank that helped their dreams come true. First American Bank. Strong. Responsive. Each bank making its own local decisions. Knowing you by name. Sharing your dreams. First American Bank. Where the American who comes first is you.
these memories, where you can see yesterday as clearly as today. Nobody values your home more, and nobody deserves your trust more than Edina Realty. A family tradition since 1955. Why is KS95 your favorite radio station? I like the enthusiasm, I like the music, I like the variety of music. I like the variety. Well, it's just great music to listen to at work. It's upbeat and it, it gets me going. No rap, no hard rock. It's fun, it's just fun to listen to. Oh, I love the different variety of fun. Because they're fun. I would say if you're looking for a wide variety of music, listen to KS95. KS95, the best variety of the 70s, 80s, and today. I didn't get to see or hear much of the Gopher game tonight, but I guess I was a little bit surprised at the uh, score, at the final yeah, score. I think a few people were. You don't want to minimize the positive of, right. of it all, but I think the Gophers maybe had different uh, expectation mm -hmm. of this. They were hoping for a score differential as big as a sycamore tree tonight, those Gophers, against the Sycamores of Indiana State. But they, Minnesota may have had to settle for a seedling tonight. No blowout, as some expected this evening at the Dome. And one look at the sideline would tell you that Jim Wacker was not a happy camper. Look at him. Wacker's tongue lashing served its purpose. The Gophers did come out of things. Went up 10-0 in the second with Tim Shade and sophomore Tony Levine clicked for the touchdown. Still, the Gophers led at half by only seven points to 10-3. Levine had a nice night. The former Highland Parker hauled in this pass from Shade in the fourth quarter on third and short. He cut up field and almost went all the way. It helped set up a Chris Darkins touchdown. Shade, by the way, another decent night with 345 yards passing. Still the 27-10 uh, to 10 Gopher win, not quite the overall performance the coach was looking for. Oh, it's going to go down in the, in the record book like any other victory. Uh, you know, you, sometimes you got to be able to not play real good and still be good enough to win. And, uh, you know, I think that was, this was one of those kind of games. I'm not really elated with our performance and so on. The players aren't either. They know we can play better than we did, and we need to. But by the same token, boy, we need wins worse than anything in the world. I'm sick of those moral victories. And boy, you played good against Penn State and you almost won. That's not what we need right now. Here, here. Next Saturday, the Gophers host Kansas State at the Dome. Lou Holtz may have another one of those years he lives for. Surrounded in controversy, his team picked as the underdog. Just your typical Notre Dame season. Holtz took his squad into Ann Arbor, ranked 11th today. Michigan was number three, but the Fighting Irish special teams came out number one. Mike Miller takes this punt, zigs a little bit, then zags, zigs a few more times, maybe zags a couple more. Now he's right to the races here, 56 yards for the touchdown. A little later, Notre Dame quarterback Kevin McDougall gave... The Irish, a little breathing room, calling his own number for the score here, dashes in. Turned out the Irish would need every point. They held off the Wolverines 27 to 23 and held Lou on his shoulders out of the stadium. Penn State, Nittany Lions narrowly avoided the upset against USC today. Under a minute to go, Trojan quarterback Rob Johnson hits Johnny McWilliams for the touchdown pass. Southern Cal trailed by a point. They went for two on the conversion and the win, but McWilliams can't haul in the same pass. Penn State escapes with a 21-20 win to move to 2-0 in Happy Valley. Elsewhere in the Big Ten today, it was Iowa State losing to Iowa by 331-28. Missouri, a big winner over Illinois. Indiana beat Northern Illinois 28-10. Purdue rolled over Western Michigan 28-13. Michigan State beats Kansas today 31-14. Ohio State beat Washington tonight here on Channel 5. And also this evening, Wisconsin beat SMU 24-16. Other top 10 college scores from today. Top-ranked Florida State embarrassed Clemson, 21st rank, and Howe, 57 zip. Number two, Alabama. Tough time over Vanderbilt, 17-6. Florida over Kentucky by four. Tennessee got by Georgia uh, rather handily, 38-6. It was Nebraska breezing by Texas Tech. Oklahoma beat Texas A&M by 30. And it was 10th-ranked Colorado, 45 over Baylor, 21. Full slate of games around town in the MIAC. Augsburg today didn't fool around in the first quarter against Huron, South Dakota. Pistol Pete touches, hooks up with Jeff Capey. He took it the rest of the way, some 86 yards for the score. The offense got it done as, on the ground as well. Watch the effort by Marty Alger to get this one in for the score. Augies went up 22 to nothing. Let the defense do the rest of the work. Pat Fall picks off the pass here inside the 10-yard line. Augsburg goes on to beat Huron. 22 to 6.
Elsewhere in the Mayak this afternoon, it was Central Iowa coming to town to beat Bethel by 10. It was Carlton over Northwestern. Big day for the Pipers. They beat Mount Scenario 28-zip. St. John's, no problems with Mayville. And St. Olaf over Luther 24-13. Up in Moorhead, Moorhead State beat Concordia 21-zip. Augustana beat Gustavus 35-0. Uh, River Falls beat St. Thomas today. Mal Scanlon's uh, debut. And uh, McAllister got beat by Pomona Pitzer, California 33-13. Dave Winfield was not in the lineup tonight against Texas, so it's a pretty safe bet when he will shoot for 3,000 here at the Dome next week. Meanwhile, the guy who guys who were in the lineup tonight was trying to end a two-game skid. Kirby turned a 3-0 deficit into a one-run lead with one swing of the bat tonight. He connected for the grand slam here in the fifth, but the Rangers scored three times in the sixth. Juan Gonzalez drives home, Butch Davis with the go-ahead run, and the Rangers go on and in the game to win this one by a score of 7-4. to four. Twins will face Nolan Ryan tomorrow afternoon in Arlington. So with three weeks left in the season, there are three races that are still up for grabs. Here are the contenders. It's the White Sox winning tonight, 3-1 to over Detroit. Their lead over Texas is 3.5. Baltimore beat Oakland, 3-1. to New York over Kansas City, 12-5. to Toronto beat California, so the Blue Jays' lead stays at one game. In the National, San Francisco lost to St. Louis today, 3-1. to so the Braves are in first place by a half game. They could go up a full game if they beat San Diego right now. It's 3-1 to one in the sixth in favor of the Braves. While we're on the subject of baseball, Steffi Graf felt at a grand slam today in the women's finals of the U.S. Open. Graf, the top seed, dispatched 12-seeded Helena Sokova. <laughs> tomorrow pitting American Pete Sampras against Francis Cedric Peeling. Both were winners today in the semifinals. You say it's too early to be talking about fall. How about winter? Look at this. NHL hockey tonight. Only it was in London, Toronto Maple Leafs against the New York Rangers. Third period score tied at three scramble in front of the Leafs net. Sergei Nemchinov knocks it in as the Rangers go on to beat the Leafs in exhibition play five to three. Of course, more football tomorrow at the Dome as the Vikings take on the Bears, hoping to to uh, even their record. And uh, Barry Ward makes his debut tomorrow. Oh, big game big, already. Big game. Yeah. We'll be there. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Well, still ahead, he's one dumb seat. And <laughs> stay tuned for that. But first, here's another look at tonight's Powerball numbers. The jackpot is an estimated $24 million. of all the new releases. You know, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I believe in giving people more for their money. So not only is everything on Wendy's Super Value Menu 99 cents each, but on our Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, you get two full strips of bacon. Our Biggie fries are big, like our baked potato. Plus, Wendy's Hamburger Kids Meal with a toy is just $1.99. At Wendy's, you don't pay more. You just get more. Every day. And that's the truth. The 9 for 99 Super Value Menu and $1.99 Hamburger Kids Meal at Wendy's. It's USA Exercise 10-year anniversary sale. Celebrate the savings with six months interest-free financing. With no money down, no payments, and no interest till February 94. Save on a Body Smith Wide Bench, only $2.99. Work out when you want with a complete home gym, only $12.49. Treadmills, climbers, and free weight equipment are sale price. And hex dumbbells, standard and Olympic plates are just 47 cents a pound. USA Exercise Equipment. Closeout time at Wally McCarthy's Pontiac in White Bear Lake. And the two hottest cars, the Grand Am and the Bonneville, have the hottest deals. Right now, get $2,000 off any new Grand Am. Or get $1,000 off and 3.9% financing. What about a new Bonneville? Get $3,000 off or get $2,250 off and 3.9% financing. The hottest deals on the hottest cars. It's closeout time at Wally McCarthy's Pontiac in White Bear Lake. Finally tonight, many of you may leave your business cards for others to remember you. Yeah, but if you're a thief, you probably don't want to leave a calling card behind. Nonetheless, that's what a man accused of stealing a car did in Marshall, Minnesota. He left his own resume under one of the seats of a stolen 1985 Chevrolet uh, celebrity, that is. But there was no name on the handwritten resume, so police called the employers on it 
and pinpointed the suspect. Now, I'm thinking in the first place, not bright to leave it there, but in the second place, if you don't put your name on a resume, <laughs> man, the man is the not a brain surgeon to begin with. As you said, one dumb thief. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps Very up this the, uh, late report of Eyewitness to the Week. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good night, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow at 5.30 and 10. Hey, why aren't you at Music Land?